Okay, close your eyes, watch your breath. Try to stay with the breath all the way in, all the way out. You notice there will be some voices in your mind that tell you to stay, and other voices that say, let's go someplace else. So, those second voices you don't have to listen to. You have to choose the voices inside that are your true friends. This is an important principle in learning how to develop protection for yourself, is learning how to choose your friends, both inside and outside. We carry the voices of all kinds of people around with us. So you have to be careful which voices you pick up from the outside to begin with, and especially which people you, who you are acquainted with, people you have dealings with, are the ones you can actually take as good examples. This is how you learn how to be self-reliant. In other words, learning what other people out there are reliable too. The Buddha says to look for four characteristics and friends outside. First is conviction, conviction that your actions really are important, that they really do, really does make a difference what you're going to be doing right now. Some people get apathetic, they say, well, the sun is going to go nowhere and the world is going to burn to a crisp, so it doesn't really matter in the long run what happens. You can't listen to those voices. Those are the voices that deny you the power of your own actions. So listen to the voices that say your actions do make a difference. You have to be careful about what you do and say and think. The second quality is virtue. That follows right on conviction. If your actions really are important, you want to make sure that you abstain from doing things that are going to be harmful. It starts with the five precepts and then it gets more refined than that as you notice what your actions are doing in terms of their impact on other people and on yourself. The third quality you want to emulate in a good friend is generosity. So look for someone who's generous and learn about how that person thinks about generosity, because all too often, especially we live in this society where everybody's talking about how much wealth they can amass, how much they can gather together, gather together for themselves. There's very little talk about how to be generous and what good thing it is. So look for the friends who do encourage generosity, and they themselves are generous. Learn from them how they think about material things. And John Lee has a good way of thinking. He says, think of the material things that you're giving away as a kind of fruit. As you give them away, you're squeezing the juice out of the fruit and you're giving the rind. In other words, you develop the principle of generosity in your own heart. And that becomes something you can depend on. And then finally, there's discernment. People know to, how to look at what's skillful and what's not skillful, and how to talk themselves into doing skillful things even though they don't feel like it, and how to talk themselves out of doing unskillful things that they would like to do. Learn from them. Try to see how they talk to themselves. Pick up some wisdom from them. And this way your choice of friends makes you a better person. Because it's not that you just look for good people to be, have as your friends, you try to imitate their qualities. So their qualities become your qualities. And then when those qualities are yours, then you can really depend on them. So keep this principle in mind. So many of the Buddha's teachings start with admirable friendship. It was finding the right people to hang around. The Buddha himself said he was an admirable friend for all of us. Without him, we wouldn't know that there was a path to the end of suffering. With him, we know that that path exists. And that we don't have to simply put up with the ups and downs of the world. There's something better than this, and it can be found through our efforts. So take him as a good friend to emulate as well. And that way you become a person you can rely on. <laughs>